So you blew up your two-stroke? Dude, me too. Today we're gonna find out exactly why my 2006 RM250 blew up. We're gonna do that by performing a leak down test and I'm also gonna show you guys how to build your own leak down test tool so you can do this yourselves right at home. And as you can see, we're also gonna crack this engine open and take a look at the carnage. So thanks for watching, let's get it guys. What's up guys, welcome back. I'm Charles, MX Revival, mxrevival.com. I can already tell the audio in here is a little spicy, so welcome to my makeshift one car garage in some random apartment in Meridian, Idaho. A lot of you guys know we just moved out, and uh, I'm even stealing the power to turn the lights on in here, so pretty cool, full cockroach mode, and today we're going to do a leak down test on my 2006 RM250. A lot of you guys saw the last RM250 video. I pretty much bought this used, spruced it up, jetted it, and just really excited to ride it. I waited a whole year to do it, I'm not sure why. Anyways, on the first ride, the bike blew up. So let's get right into it today. We're gonna do a leak down test, see if we can find some air leaks, which is the reason you would perform a leak down test, and the reason I think we have an air leak is because the jetting was perfect and the bike still blew. There's also a good chance there was already some damage inside the engine. I was warned by the previous owner that it was starting to run a little bit tight. And as far as I'm concerned, if the bike blew up on its main voyage with me, I knew it would just be good content for you guys. Talk about taking one for the team, right? So let's get right into it. I've got this homemade leak down tester. A lot of you guys have probably seen leak down testers homemade. Most of them are. You can make them many different ways. I'll explain why I made it in this configuration very shortly. But long story short, we're gonna plug up the engine with with an exhaust plug. And don't worry, I'm gonna leave all the parts lists in the description below. I may even do something on the website, free download so you guys can build your own. And then we're gonna plug a few more things on the engine. Then we're gonna be able to pressurize it with this leak down tester. And like I said, I suspect an air leak. So we're gonna plug up the engine, pressurize it with about five PSI using a bicycle pump. And then we're gonna spray everything down with some soapy water to see if we can find air coming out after we pressurize the engine. And what this would indicate is that air is getting in while we are riding creating the lean condition, therefore melting my piston and top end together. What's messed up is I built one of these about 15 years ago, finally realized I hadn't used it in about 15 years, threw it away. So back to Home Depot I went, people were giving me crazy looks, I brought my spare 2004 RM250 engine to Home Depot, I threw it in the cart, strapped a camera to my chest, I looked like Iron Man, I was getting all sorts of funny looks in the store, but got just about $30 worth of pieces to make this, so this is really cheap and easy to do yourself. Now to get started, you gotta do a few simple things, so let's jump into this bad boy. Alright guys, so the next step is gonna be to plug up the engine and then plop our leak down tester into the intake here. You guys may notice there's a pretty fast 90 going on with this leak down tester, and that's because I wanted to get around the shock really quickly. So as soon as this is plugged in, it takes a 90 down, gets past the shock, sticks out past the frame rail over here. You can build these any way you want. You can build them straight, long, flexible, whatever. This is just what I came up with and I think it's going to do the trick. Now admittedly, when I brought my 04 engine into Home Depot, this is the 06, the 04 has a stock intake boot. Uh, the 06 here has a rad valve from Boyson, and so I believe that this is a little bit easier to get the leak down tool into. This portion here is inch and a half diameter, and so it was a little bit more difficult to weasel into the stock intake. In this case here, I'm gonna hit this with a little bit of waterproof grease, and that will help it slide in very easily. Also, I'm gonna take the boot off first because it is easier to install the boot onto the tool then put the tool on back onto the engine. So we'll pop that off, a little bit of grease on there. This will also give it a better seal. And the Boyson intake boot is directional, so mind the arrows on top of it. All right, so we are plugged in there. There is a line here that holds the carburetor, so you wanna make sure that this tool gets past that line and doesn't stop halfway in and seat the thing all the way. You can see the tool is seated all the way to the midway point. You guys may also be able to see the rubber's a bit old, it's got some dry rot going, so this actually could be the culprit when we start our leak down test, the part that would be letting in extra air. Go ahead and throw a band clamp on, I got lucky. The Boyson one just barely fits. Tighten that bad boy up. Go ahead and put the other band clamp on. Slide it onto the engine. That's it, so our tool is installed. As you can see, it gets around the shock very quickly with this 90. We can see the gauge really easily and then we can fill it with air right here with our bicycle pump. There's just a little Schrader valve on this thing. It's just like the tube in your dirt bike's tire. All right, so your next step will be to pop this bad boy into the exhaust port of the engine. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a little bit of grease on this too. It's probably not necessary, but again, it may help with a seal. 
Uh, putting it in is very simple. You can find these in like a plumbing and gas section. Again, I'll go over all that stuff uh, pretty soon. Ah! All right, the grease is a bad idea. Don't grease it, it just slides out. Clean that up, hit it with some brake clean. Let's try that again. All right, that's nice and tight. Doesn't appear to be able to be pulled out. All right, so at this point, we're just about ready to pressurize the engine. We still need to block off the power valve or exhaust valve breather hoses. You can do that with a vice grip. In my case, there's two of them. I'm just gonna fold them in half while I do the test. You can also stick a bolt inside of them. Folding them in half may not be the best idea because I may end up needing my other hand. Just do whatever works for you. And so the key areas we're gonna be focusing on are first the tool. We're gonna make sure that air bubbles are not coming out of the tool I just made because there's always a possibility that there's a failure right there, especially with extra junctures. Every time you have a joint, or a threaded part or whatever it may be, uh, you risk uh, a leak. From there, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the Boysen intake boot. As you saw, it's a little bit messed up. It doesn't look cracked all the way through, but we're gonna find out. And then we're gonna go ahead and spray down the cylinder base gasket area all the way around, see if we can find some leaks there. We're gonna go ahead and spray down all of the power valve doors all the way around the top of the engine. And if we can't find anything there, we're gonna have to check the left side crank seal. That's the dry side behind the stator. The right side crank seal is in transmission oil on the clutch side of the bike. And later on, we'll go into why we would suspect the left side or dry side crank seal versus the right. And we'll be able to tell by looking at the piston why it would be one or the other if it even were a crank seal. All right, so for these breather hoses, we're just gonna go ahead and double fold them in half and then hit them with a zip tie. And uh, that should probably seal off any air that would normally be escaping. Always better to use zip ties that actually work garbage. We'll just go ahead and do those one at a time as well instead of as a group, be a little more thorough. All right, that's number two. Let's go ahead and hook up our bicycle pump. There we go. Oh, pressure falls right off. All right, it's leaking pretty quick. We want to spray the water around the tool and the boot here. See if we can get any bubbles. I'm gonna have to fill this thing with air over and over because it's dropping so rapidly. I can literally hear the air. Maybe coming out of the tool, I'm not sure. All right guys, so we actually have a leak at the tool. I need to take it apart and uh, seal this up a little bit better. We're getting some air bubbles right there, so that'll help us move on. And as you can see, uh, it isn't always perfect the first time. All right, we got the tool fixed, hopefully. We added a little more Teflon tape between the joints and uh, hopefully the thing stopped leaking. So we'll check that out now. The tool was leaking really bad. As a matter of fact, that already looks a hell of a lot better. Let's see. Still dropping rapidly, so we'll see if the tool is still messed up. I can hear something leaking. All right, guys, I think the tool is okay, but I can hear like an audible hissing, so I want to work my way around the cylinder and all the other areas it might be, but I have a suspicion that we've got some... Uh, leaky left side crank seal action just based off the noise and i could be wrong but i mean it's loud so we'll see definitely dirty and oily in there so that might be some uh fuel and premix escaping the crankcase all right guys thankfully my buddy blaine showed up because he's doing a hell of a job helping me pump this sucker up while i listen for air and if it really isn't the tool which i'm starting to think it's not all the joints should be pretty well sealed um, I'm really thinking it might be this crank seal straight away. All right, so the tool is good. I verified no bubbles anywhere on the tool from the soapy water, but we still keep hearing this hiss and I can't pinpoint it. We haven't moved on to the cylinder yet, but that's only because I can hear it hissing towards the bottom of the engine. And so it doesn't sound like it's the left side crank seal. We have the stator cover off, can't hear anything in there, but there's a strange hissing. It almost sounds like it's coming from behind the sprocket. We're gonna keep looking for it and we're gonna find it. All right, sprocket's off, here goes nothing. We're gonna go ahead and pump it up, give her a spray. And we have air bubbles coming out from the bottom of the freaking output shaft. So that means it's sucking air from the sprocket. I've never seen that or expected that before. It would be sucking air from there. I was, I was like, dude, you can hear it, but why would it be coming from there, <laughs> you know? Say hi to Blaine, everybody. He's helping me pump this sucker up. Well, say hi. You're Canadian, right? Aren't you supposed to be polite? What's up, everybody? <laughs> 
we are doing a uh, complete engine tear down and probably a, a rebuild therefore. So in my head, I'm trying to think of how air could get into the combustion chamber, but not transmission oil, which would be getting burned at the same time. The bike doesn't really smoke, nothing out of the ordinary. At any rate, you guys can see that sometimes you build these tools and they're not quite airtight either. We had to repair the tool once. I had also hoped to use the soapy water trick up around the cylinder base gasket, the intake boot. I did a little bit around the intake boot. It seems fine but typically things leak from the top side of the engine and not from behind the sprocket. At any rate, let's talk a little bit about how I built this leak down test tool. Again, all the parts are gonna be in the description below, but I'm gonna show you real quick, just a fast overview of all the pieces. And then after that, I think it's time to tear into this engine and look at the carnage because looking in through the exhaust port, the piston is absolutely melted. So let's check out this tool, go over the components real quick, and then we will get into the carnage inside the engine itself. All right, so here's the tool. As you can see, it's very, very, very simple. We have a gas pressure testing gauge here. It's about 15 bucks. Then we go into a three quarter close nipple. So it just means it's a very, very close nipple so we can keep this area condensed. You would find this in the gas section at the hardware store. Both the gauge and the 90 degree elbow, which we're getting to next, are obviously three quarter. As we make our way through the 90, we have one more three quarter close nipple here. And then finally an inch and a half PVC fitting, which is reduced down to this three quarter size here. So we have a total of one, two, three, four, five pieces. And then of course we have some plumber's tape in between all these joints to help with uh, a leak free seal, which as you could see from earlier in the video, I screwed up on once, three wraps wasn't enough, I ended up going five wraps. And so now this tool is airtight. For the PVC section here, the inch and a half fit the engine the best. When I was wandering around through Home Depot, testing the fit with the 04 engine, it was a little tighter on the OEM uh, intake boot, and this Boyson one on the 06 engine actually helped me get in there just a little bit better, but inch and a half is still the best choice. Next size down it is inch and a quarter and it is too small. In addition to that, we have our exhaust plug. No big deal, this is a two inch, fits right in the RM250. Other engines like the YZ that have sort of a male end coming out of the cylinder, you're gonna wanna use something like this that's a cap. It's like a black two inch cap, also in plumbing. Plop it right over the end of your cylinder. Comes with a band clamp. Same sort of deal, just a different style. Last thing you guys are gonna to wanna to pick up is a spray bottle for a little bit of soap, dish soap, and water so you can get your suds on. You guys saw how that worked in the video when the sprocket shaft was spewing out air. All right, so it's time to check out the carnage inside this sucker. I already know it's gonna be terrible. And now not only do I for sure need a new top end, a refreshed cylinder, and probably a few other things, we totally need to inspect and probably rebuild this entire engine. All right, getting into the carnage inside, it's really simple to pop the jug off of a two-stroke engine. There's just a few quick things you need to do. You need to start by draining all your coolant out. I'm using Evans waterless coolant. Go ahead and pull your radiators off. Then you're gonna to wanna to remove your upper head stay followed by your right side power valve door so you can remove the actuating rod on your power valve governor. Take your spark plug out, remove your carburetor, which is already done. Then you can go ahead and loosen the four base nuts on the cylinder itself and the cylinder will just slide right off. If it doesn't, you can give it a little love tap with a rubber mallet never anything harder than that. Sometimes you'll be fighting the dowel pins that are holding it down to the crankcases themselves. And holy hell, that is ugly. There is just so much bad going on inside of that engine. Check out this freaking piston, guys. Oh my God. Talk about severe melt. It's missing rings. It's collapsed on top. Just chunks of the entire crown are gone. Look at, there's rings like stuck in the top of the piston dome. Just absolute carnage. This is actually really fun, despite the fact that I can't ride my bike and it needs a complete engine rebuild. Still fun to show you guys. So the cylinder actually doesn't look terrible inside. It's definitely messed up and needs to be fixed, but something else that's wrong with the cylinder, to me, at least if I had my way, the cylinder has a sleeve in it. You guys can see these two different lips here. You got the steel sleeve inside, and then you have the original aluminum of the cylinder there. Not only does this thing feel like it weighs a ton, probably because of the added weight of the sleeve. Not only that, sleeves aren't as good as the stock Nicosil. It's definitely an option to fix your bike. Don't get me wrong, like somebody got to enjoy it running for a little while. But if I had my way, I would have the original aluminum and Nicosil bore. It dissipates heat better, they last longer, and they definitely don't weigh this much either. This thing weighs a metric shit ton. So I haven't popped the head yet. I busted it loose, but I figure it's probably pretty ugly too. We'll check that out together and then we'll talk about some more stuff I don't necessarily like. Oh yeah. So there's the inside of the head. You can see a bunch of piston ring chunks that got smashed 
into the roof here and uh, it was probably nice before that it looks like it probably was so this will need to be repaired as well you guys can also see right about where the end of my finger is the ring kind of sprung out of the groove of the piston and it ate its way into the cylinder wall and also the exhaust valve so i'll need to replace the exhaust valve i actually don't even know if this will be serviceable it could probably have a new sleeve pressed in but I may just have to get a new OEM cylinder if I want that aluminum bore. And then something else that has going against it, at least in my opinion, not that there's anything ultimately wrong with it, but guys, I would love an OEM crankshaft assembly and the rod in there says hot rods. So the entire assembly is probably a hot rods unit. And last but not least, the piston is Namira, so, or Namura. So that is like the, probably the cheapest piston you could buy. I would prefer a Pro X at least, which is like on par with stock and reliable. Although I will say in terms of reliability, the bike was chugging along pretty well for one that already had damage when I started riding it. Guaranteed it was already started. I just finished it off. So guys, that pretty much concludes today's video. The baby is wailing again on the monitor in the background. That's daddy duty number two for me. I gotta run inside and take care of that little girl. So hope you enjoyed today's video. Guys, we have a complete engine rebuild on our hands here, which is kind of a bummer, but totally my own fault. I'm the asshole that bought a bike full price that was pretty much already blown up and then proceeded to ride it. Although it does look amazing and I do still get joy out of staring at it. At any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you learned something, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. I really appreciate you. And until next time, shred safe. I will see you soon. Nice.